push hands. It's not to get you to not move your feet. It's so that you don't have to move your feet. Okay. okay. So the, the, goal, the goal is, you know, a lot of people will do stationary push hands and say, I didn't move my feet. Yeah, but you lost the fight. Mm -hmm. right? The idea is to be able to win the fight without moving your feet, not to lose the fight so that you don't move your feet. So this context. So as soon as the pressure builds up and the fight is about to be lost, then you better move your feet. Right. If you don't move your feet, then you've, you're missing the point of the exercise. But the goal of the exercise is to not have to move your feet to protect yourself, but to still protect yourself. Okay. <laughs> People do. Yeah. That was pretty clear. Yeah, there we go. So people miss one of those things. They, they think it's to not move your feet. No, it's to not die, is what it is. And if you can do it without moving your feet, then you're developing a, a good skill level. But see here, when we start doing this kind of pressure, right, and there's that, this kind of thing, and if, there's, if there, we're actually increasing the pressure, we're practicing forward pressure, but we're not do, if we're doing it with pressure, it's not correct. Mm -hmm. We want to do it without pressure. So there's pressure. Find that centripetal engagement. Make no pressure. Take the pressure away so there's no weight on your feet. There we go. That's it. So suddenly there's no weight on your feet. Can you feel that again? Yeah. Okay, so, so now I feel weight on my feet. Yeah, and you find that centripetal engagement, then oh, yeah. there's yeah. no pressure, and I move. I feel it coming off. Right. So that's finding that, finding that point, reducing the surface area. So here, the surface area, reduce the surface area, that's it. So you maintain the vector and reduce the sur surface area. That, that's, that's a good thing. Reducing the surface area makes a lot of sense. I can really, so there's surface area. Yeah. And there's no surface area. That's it. There's a little, there's about yeah. that much. Okay. Right. But that's, that's, well, yeah. very clear. That's, when, that's very clear. So there's, a, there's that much surface area. You can measure it by lateral bounce. Right. right? If there's a, there, now there's no lateral bounce. Right. That's a point. And if I go this way, there's no, I don't move you to the side. You, you roll with it. Right. Right. So if I move this way, the, there. If, if I do this, the water's frozen. One of my teachers in Toronto said, uh, you flow like a river in the wintertime. <laughs> <laughs> so there, see there's pressure. Yeah. There's no pressure. That's it. No pressure, I move. Surface area. That, that, that's, I mean, that's so clear because you can, you can really see it. Mm -hmm. Surface area, no surface area. Okay. But I still have this idea. I still have this. <laughs> I still have this idea that um, once, once, once I. Uh, mm -hmm. Once I once you what once I once I get it once I find that thing that it's all done then I can just relax because it, here's the thing I think I think that what what all this thing brings out is the degree to which um, the mind is committed to bursts or like intense moments followed by relaxation mm -hmm. intense moments followed by relaxation so you know you work really hard to yeah but I'm going to get a cup of coffee at the end of this and then mm -hmm. right. As opposed to always, always being in this place. Right. Always. There, there's a, there seems to be a conflict between intensity and relaxation. What we're looking for is intense relaxation. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would so, buy that. Yeah, so we're, we want to have the uh, ubiquitous, pervasive, and deep awareness of what it takes to maintain that perfect balance and that alignment. Because can, I can be this balanced, but if I pick one foot off the ground, oh, I'm not all that balanced. Mm -hmm. But if I change my hips and my alignment and relax my hips, then when I pick one foot up, the whole body moves and adapts, and I become balanced. So there is a better balancing uh, uh, algorithm that's there. If I'm, if I'm like this, I say I'm balanced, I pick the foot up, I'm not. I relax, I pick the foot up, I balance myself. So, in, in this thing about falling through the holes, I think what I'm talking, what I'm trying to get into my mind, which gets displayed and proven and unproven in this exercise, is being being committed to, for lack of a horrible, pardon the cliche, a way of life, a way of being, 
a consciousness so that you're always, that you never leave, right? So you know, you sit and you meditate. Oh, I was writing this, this beautiful, beautiful story. This, this mystical Jewish tale, really a brilliant story, if I say so myself. And, and I put down pen and thought, oh God, now I'm just a schmuck again. When I was writing this story, when I was in the middle of writing this story, I was, I was <laughs> as enlightened as any one of them. I was in, as enlightened and in touch with everything as the person I'm writing. I was that great. And now, I was like, start writing, start writing, you know. <laughs> so it's going in and out of these, these mm -hmm. states. You know, sitting down and meditating and everything, just like, like unto a Buddha. And then you get up and you're driving down the street and some guy cuts you off and you want to rip his heart out. Yep. Right? Yeah, so, so to, me, to me that's the ideal. And that's the ideal that gets tested mm -hmm. in this, is being so totally committed to a kind of being, way of being, that no matter what happens, mm -hmm. you never leave that. Even, even if you do it and you push me across the room, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I'm still not, I still don't have to leave that place. That's a choice. Right. Yes. That's a choice. Exactly. That I make. So, I, I mean, it's so habitual, I don't think of it as a choice. But in fact, it is a choice. Mm -hmm. Right? And just as, like, being here and, and, and just doing good things, or there you things, go. Or bad things. Right? Yeah. But it's so as soon as I think that I've done something good, I say, oh, wow, what a good boy am I. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, but, but it's, it's, being, it's being able to stay in the one place mm -hmm. and never leave it, no matter what, would be the ideal, I would say. Yeah. And that's what, that's what gets challenged and revealed in this. <laughs> Which is pretty simple compared to, like I was once talking to this guy who was in World War II. Mm -hmm. He was with the forward Canadian forces, like mm -hmm. in going through France and Italy, just like, you know. And I said, how do, you, how do you get through a thing like that? He said, you know what? I was always able to sleep. Mm -hmm. I said, sleep? He said, yeah, I'll just put my head down on a rock, bullets, bombs, I'll just lie down, go to sleep. Most guys couldn't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I could just go to sleep. Yeah, my, one of my students was, uh, was with the fire team behind enemy lines. This is about 20 years ago. So there's four of them. And they had to hit the dirt in the middle of a field as the enemy army rolled up and set up camp right on the edge of the field, right on the tree line. And they just had to lay there. And it was eight hours until dark. And they just all lay down. And then they had to get up and run for 20 miles. And when he got up and he started going, he says, come on. And, and he says, the other three were exhausted. And he says, well, we were just had eight hours of rest. What are you talking about? And they were sitting there with their adrenaline going for eight hours right. and their heart rating. And, and he was asleep. Mm -hmm. He slept for eight hours. He was fine. Mm -hmm. The, the old uh, samurai training, or the, the sword training, the story of the guy whose job is to keep the fire lit. Mm -hmm. And if he falls asleep and the fire goes out, then somebody comes along and kicks him, mm -hmm. and attacks him with a stick. So he learned how to wake up when the fire started to get low. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it was every five minutes. <laughs> and then after a while, he was able to relax. And so he could get up and almost not even wake up mm -hmm. and stoke the fire again, go back and, and lay down. So he managed to maintain that level of awareness of his environment while still resting. And when we're, uh, a lot of people can't relax without being asleep. But if you can, you know, if you just lie, lie down and relax and meditate and focus on something, then your awareness expands. Mm -hmm. Your body goes to sleep, your mind becomes really calm and it's like taking a drug. It feels like you know, you're, you're taking oxycodone your body is that relaxed and deep, but your mind is aware. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going for here, is that balance of relax relaxation, adaptability, and intense focus. So that we are learning what to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And learning how to see the whole picture and see individual parts. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that if you're panicking, if you've got dialogue going mm -hmm. on inside, or if you have physical tension in your body. If I'm like this, I can't fight. Mm -hmm. I have to be mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And the more intense the fight gets, the more relaxed I get. Uh, that sounds like PTSD. <laughs> when the bullets are flying, 
they become calm because they have a they have a program for that. Mm -hmm. They have a protocol for that. They don't have a, a way to sh shut that program off in, in peacetime. Mm -hmm. So here, that's several changes that you mm -hmm. just made, but it's one state that you were you were going for. Mm -hmm. So you're going for that balance, that alignment. Mm -hmm. So then fighting becomes like. Uh, so fighting becomes like this. In the beginning, it's all of that. You know, you're doing all of these adjustments, going this way, that way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way. And you're making all of these adjustments. And then after a while, once you begin to find out what the middle feels like, then it's just this. And it becomes these tiny little changes. And to everybody else, it looks like the pole is still, but to you, there's this constant changing and rolling. You're changing that point of engagement all the time. Mm -hmm. right? If your mind wanders, it falls over. If your mind is too tense, you're doing this. You're chasing it around. Like that guy flying the plane. The plane's jolting and bouncing around all over the place. And the, and the instructor says, what are you doing? Well, I'm flying a plane. Let go of the stick. So you let go, and oh, the plane just smooth, flyly, you know, flyly smooths along. <laughs> Trying to balance our own body. Stick goes this way, stick goes that way. So it's moving back and forth, and we're going, oh, stop it from there, stop that, stop that. We have all these things to stop. Mm -hmm. And as we develop a more intense awareness, and become, we become more relaxed, but it takes a lot of focus and a lot of microscopic changes, not this big. Mm -hmm. We're making this many changes in order to keep that pole upright. And it, the, those changes become imperceptible. Now, if I'm focusing on the stick, this is a fun exercise because I can't do this and not have my body balanced. So my body has to align, and I have to relax everything in order to be able to feel those tiny changes. And it's doing fine until a fruit fly lands on it. Mm -hmm. But it's not flat, right? So there, there doesn't have a flat base, and the floor is not particularly level in this old building. So it's not going to do very well. But to people watching, it looks like I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. But to me, I'm doing all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. The tendency is, when it gets to a certain point, you do this. It's actually leaning on my hand. So it is not balanced, and I am not balancing. I've developed a pathology that I'm using to cope. It's like a balancing mechanism, or, mm -hmm. or a compensating for a bad hip. The musculature gets out of alignment and it just sort of leans on one side. It looks like nothing, but it's a chronic problem, and it's always going that way, and then it gets worse and worse over time. So uh, push hands helps to expose those weaknesses, mm -hmm. where somebody will go, eh, oh, geez. Then you have to start balancing again and find that alignment. So then you take that, that awareness of that imbalance back to your forms practice. And then you practice your form, and you're standing, and you start looking for that thing that you didn't know was there before. And then you start to find that, and you find other things mm -hmm. that were part of that, that adjustment, that compensation. There. And then one day, it just stays there. It's not going to do it now. But one day, it just stays there, and you, you have this moment where you don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. And it's perfectly balanced. And then you go, <gasps> <laughs> and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this kind of idea of you know, that, and, and to have a still point, that to be able to do that you know, in your body or outside your body, to be able to maintain that awareness, uh, is, then becomes the, sort of the key to the practice. So when I'm here, that still point can be inside my body, or it can be inside your body. Mm -hmm. So I can move around that point. Or it can be the point where we meet. Or it can, again, it can be the ground underneath me. There can be that still point. For the most part, for doing techniques, especially close range, it's inside my body. You're going to put you somewhere close to the fulcrum, and I turn. But for long range stuff, it's going to be moving in and out all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's the point of the needle. So the needle gets longer, the needle gets shorter. If we're in here, and you're pushing, this is how long the needle is. Mm -hmm. And then as we move and we change, this is where the needle is. But I'm always keeping you balanced on the end of that needle, mm -hmm. so that whenever you push me, you're either pushing into the ground or off to the side. That's the physical manifestation of it. When you can get really good at that, then you have the whole psychological, mental, spiritual manifestation mm -hmm. of that as well, 
where you're just doing that, you end up one, becoming one with the universe.